You know that lush, wide, unmistakable Juno sound? It's something that's been missing from Ableton for way too long, but now it's here. It's called Maya from Mono Mono. It's MPE capable, it runs on Push 3 standalone, and delivers that warm, analog Juno tone we all know and love. And it might just be the best Juno emulation I've ever used. Let me show you why. In this video, I'll walk you through every single section of Maya so you know exactly how it all works. But the big question, does it sound like the original? Let's get to it. So let's hear how it sounds. This track is completely made with Maya, apart from the drums. Let's hear it. Nice. So far it sounds like a Juno. Let's open up the initial preset and start tweaking some dials. So if you click on this little menu here, you get all the original Juno presets that come with the Juno. There was like a little patch book and the guys at Mono Mono have faithfully recreated those presets as well. Let's first talk about the DCO section and then we'll come back to this LFO section and see how it interacts with DCO and the VCF. So the DCO is essentially our sound source, our oscillators, our generators. First off, we have a square wave. We can engage and disengage the oscillators by pressing down on this button here. So I'm gonna engage this one and turn the other ones off. Now with the square wave, we can modulate the pulse width here. If we pull it all the way down, it's our usual square wave. And as we move up, we are modulating the width of the pulse. Now we can have this in manual mode which basically means it will stay static. So wherever we leave the fader, it will stay. We can put it up and we can have the LFO modulate that. We turn this up here. The LFO is now modulating that pulse width. And we can go down here and we can have the envelope modulate that pulse width as well. Next up is our sawtooth wave. And this is our classic sawtooth sound. Let's open up this filter a little bit so you can hear it. Brilliant. And then we have a sub oscillator here. And this fader here deals with how much of that sub oscillator you want to bring into the mix. And then we have a noise oscillator here. So if I pull that all down, you can hear the noise. So let's turn them all on. I'm going to put the pulse width modulation on here. Now, if you look over here, this is where we can introduce the LFO now. So the LFO, we have a rate, which you can see roughly how fast it's going with this little light here. Next, we have delay, which basically delays how quickly it gets up to the max value of the LFO. Think of it a bit like the attack on an envelope on here. So the more we increase it, the longer it takes for it to start getting into the LFO cycle. Okay, cool. So now let's go over to the next section here, which is the high pass filter. So if I play a chord for us here, you can hear that it just takes out some of that low end, especially if you've got the sub oscillator in. You might like the sound of it, but you can pull some of that low frequency out. And then we're onto the VCF. So obviously we have our filter frequency here. So that dials back some of that brightness. Fantastic. Then we got the resonance as well. Sounds lovely. Then next we have um, an envelope fader, and this is going to deal with how much the envelope is going to affect frequency cutoff of the filter. So if I pull that down, if I put like an envelope like this, a bit more of a decay, less sustain, less release, something like this maybe. If I pull that down, If I do something like the other way around, you can hear how that envelope is now affecting the frequency cutoff. If I pull that down, yeah, so you can dial in how much this envelope affects it. Let's just reset that back to something sensible. Now let's look at bringing in the LFO to modulate the frequency cutoff point here. So at the moment it's all the way down. So if I bring that in, pretty static. But then if I bring in this LFO, there's some movement and I can adjust the speed by the rate down here. 
Next up is key, which stands for key tracking on a filter. This basically means the higher you play up on the keyboard, the more the filter will open up. So the filter changes depending on which note you're playing, not just playing in the same place. If we have it all the way down, the filter will stay the same no matter what you play. If we put it all the way up to 100%, the filter follows your notes exactly. Higher notes mean brighter sound, lower notes mean darker sound. And if you put it halfway, you get a mixture of that. Last thing in the VCF is the polarity. So it essentially flips the shape of the envelope you do here upside down. So if we have something like that, I flip it over. Next up is the VCA. So we have two modes to this. We have the envelope controlling the VCA, or we can have it to just gate. So that just basically is like on off of your fingers. So as soon as I press it down, comes on, take my fingers off. That's that. Now I can have the envelope follow this. And what's really cool um, with this VCA section is the original Juno had a, quite a lot of headroom, which allowed you to mix all the voices without getting much distortion. In Maya, if you want a bit of saturation, you can crank this VCA up and it brings some saturation in. So what it was before, let's bring it down a little bit. Then we have our envelope section, which we've already been introducing to all the various different parts of Maya but essentially it has a tack, decay, sustain, release. Then the chorus section, just two buttons, but it's kind of what made this synth really come alive. It's what made it sound stereo. The original Juno was a mono synth. This chorus section gave it that stereo width. This is it without. And then we bring in the first one. Hello. Then let's try the second one. Very nice. Then try them both together. Fantastic. Okay. Now we have this spread dial here, which uh, we can keep put it in mono. So that gives us a bit more of a uh, mono signal. So I've turned the chorus off there. So that should be directly down the middle. Then if I introduce this stereo spread, it pushes it out in the stereo image and makes it a bit wider. And there's a neat little thing that's going on here. If I click on this, random serials introduce additional differences between the channels, while stereo serials are for perfect channel matching. There's different things going on each side. So it's like having two <laughs> Juno's one pound left and one pound right. Now you can link them together so you get a bit more of a traditional Juno sound and then put the chorus, but you know, this is this is really cool. We can press this button here and we get all the random serial numbers and you get a little bit of stereo width, which we didn't see on the original, which is really cool. If I put that chorus back in. Fantastic. So that's the main synth architecture there. Then we also get a few more features. So we have the portamento here. We can assign things to the pitch wheel. We can increase the voltage of the envelope and the velocity. We have envelope destinations. We can send it also to the VCO and we can send it to the resonance on the filter. And this is something I want to demonstrate on the push three, which I will get the push three out in just one sec, but this is MPE destinations and aftertouch destinations, bringing a new level expression to the Juno synth. So let's get the push three out and see how we do all that. Let's first hear how it sounds and then go over how the controls look on the push three. So here's the initial preset of Maya. Sounds like a Juno to me. Awesome. On the first page, we have the control over the oscillators. We've got the saw on, sub, let's turn the sub on, amount of sub, pitch mod, let's see that. Nice, awesome. Then if I click on Maya, I get all the other controls. So I've got the VCF, so I can control that. Fantastic. And then we've got all our usual controls. We've got the envelope, the LFO, portamento, VCA chorus. Let's put that to two. Then I'm going to go to MPE. This is now where we can assign 
different parts of Maya to be controlled by the expression on the pads. So if I turn MPE to VCF all the way up, let's hear it before actually, move my pad up and down, not much happens. Put it to MPE. You can open and close that filter with that slide parameter. Fantastic. Same thing with the pulse width. Okay, and then we, if I turn that all down, we have the aftertouch to envelope, aftertouch to VCF, aftertouch to resonance. Let's try aftertouch to VCF. Ah, oh, that's so cool. You can get like almost like a, a side chain effect. You could have a bass line. If I put this down the octave, you can almost get a side chain sort of bass. What I'm going to do quickly is change a preset. Okay, so let's now choose a preset. We can do this by turning this down. It does it in real time, which is nice. Nice. So we can get like. So that opens up a new level expression to a Juno synth that we wouldn't normally have had access to.